Hi there, and welcome to Scheduling Fate, the Moon's Gateway. Now, if you are new to this podcast, what we do here each week is take a look at where the moon is transiting in the sky, some things that I would recommend doing or not doing underneath those archetypes, the void moon, of course, the opening and closing chapters that tell you how the moon is going to play out internally, that internal universe, your intuitions, your emotions, and externally with the collective throughout the week. It's a great predictive tool to align with your horoscopes that you already get each week. Now, if you'd like to learn more about this, there is an origin podcast underneath this, a link to it to tell you more about this predictive tool of knowing where the moon's gateway is each week. If you'd like to get any of these horoscopes early, you can join my Patreon. There's a link underneath this video. You can also click join on the YouTube channel to join the community that I have there. With that being said, let's get ready to dive in. This week, we're going to be talking about July 8th through the 14th. And the three moons that we're going to be working with is a Leo moon, a Virgo moon, and a Libra moon. So fire, earth, and air. Now that Leo moon rules creativity, self-expression, originality, a lot of passion, enthusiasm. So things to do underneath this moon would be to be creative. And that not necessarily mean write something, draw something, sing something. Creative is I found a new way to decorate my home, a new meal that I like to cook, a new place I like to go a creative way to solve this problem in a very original way. This is a very playful energy, so it's great to have fun, to really express joy, be and do things that really sit right with your soul and show appreciation for those that really inspire you. Lead with confidence, lead with your heart. Now, some things that you would want to avoid underneath this moon is arrogance. Arrogance does not go well with creativity. Humbleness does. I'm very humble to the craft or the energy that inspired this creative work that I am giving to everyone around me. We want to also avoid being over dramatic about any situation. Remember that we have a lot of passion with us. We want to keep that in check and ask ourselves, is it really as dramatic or as intense as I think it is? Or do I just feel just a little bit emotionally charged right now? We also want to avoid seeking a lot of external validation. Creative, powerful, Leo, sun-based energy needs to beam from within. It's great if other people appreciate it, but what's more important is how you feel about it. Now, parts of the body that the Leo moon rules is the heart, spine, and upper back. It's a great time to check in with those areas of your temple. What can you do to support them? How can you ensure that you feel in harmony and balance with this energy? Now, the next moon that we're going to work with is a Virgo moon. Now, under a Virgo moon, we are looking at detail. We're looking at those little tiny things and habits and rituals that we have that take us from where we are to that next process. So attention to detail is something that we'll notice that this moon rules. It also rules practicality. It's in an earth sign, organization, service, helpfulness, that overall health and wellness and the good habits to have. So underneath this full moon, getting organized, getting clean, it's a great working moon. Get that to-do list done. It's a great moon to really focus on what your habits are, how you can change them and execute something that's really going to support you in the short and long term. It's also a great time to think about plans that you have in the short and the long term. What kind of pragmatic solutions or systems can you put in place to ensure that you are not only helping yourself, but others? Now, with that being said, things to avoid under this moon would be being overcritical, really paying attention to so many details that you can't see the big picture. And because you're looking at all those details, you get very worried and anxious about what may or may not happen when really you're standing in this present moment without any of those problems thus far manifesting. So being present, not anxious, taking a deep breath, taking a step back and noticing that big picture or things you want to do with this. Now the Virgo moon rules the digestive system, the intestines, the spleen, all those little things that support our overall health and wealth. This is a good energy to notice food, what you do to nourish your body, those little tiny things that you bring into your temple every day. Now the Libra moon is a moon that really rules poverty and balance, relationships and partnerships, those one-to-one connections and not necessarily romantic. This is a very contract energy. I put this on the table, you put this on the table and we harmonize in this way. It's a great energy to really represent fairness and overall justice. So things that you would want to do underneath this moon is enhance your relationships, have a check-in. Are we really supporting each other? Am I co-creating with you or am I overcompensating or are you overcompensating? It's a great time to be social, to really connect one-on-one with others and appreciate beauty overall. It's ruled by Venus. Things that you might want to avoid is being indecisive. Sometimes those Libra moons, because they want to harmonize with everyone, it's hard to make a a solid decision. So really ask yourself, how do I feel at a heart-based level? That'll help you make some of those decisions. We also want to avoid, with that being said, people-pleasing, making a decision because you feel like someone else wants you to make that decision. We want to avoid superficiality, and we also want to avoid avoiding conflict. And what I mean by that is by avoiding conflict, you will more than likely create it. So if you see something 
kind of face it and you have the opportunity to rebalance and harmonize once you work through the conflict. Now, the parts of the body that the Libra rules is the kidneys, the lower back, and the skin. Think about how you can support them. How can you really bring in overall health and health and how can you bring in overall health and balance into your body? All right, we're going to take a look at the void mood of courses and the opening and closing aspect is going to give us an insight of how this week is going to play out. The intention of this information is to help you schedule your fate throughout the week. Is this a good time to have that meeting, to go out to dinner, to have that first date, to submit that pitch or that application? to end this relationship, to move into something new. These are all things I want you to keep in mind as you notice how the energy is going to flow in the week, because if you have the ability to move some things around, that can really help you schedule your fate. All right, so the void moons. Now, there is an origin story link underneath this podcast. We'll tell you a little bit more about the void moons and why I love them so much. But the void moons, this is a time when we don't want to start anything new. We want to be really reflective, think about things that have just happened, process, tie up loose ends, listen to that internal voice. So we are set up for success as we approach the next moon story. So the first void of moon that we have this week is July 9th at 1.03 a.m. Central time zone. It's going to be for seven hours and 44 minutes. It's likely to be across the time that you are sleeping. If you're in the U.S., I encourage you to pay attention to your dreams and what comes up from the subconscious or go to sleep with questions about how do I resolve this? I think you may find some answers in that dream state. The next one is on July 11th at 4 at 8.54 p.m. Central. It's only for 12 minutes long. So during these 12 minutes, just try not to put up any social media posts or fire off any emails or even answer to certain emails that have critical outcomes or that you need a critical outcome from because there's not going to be anything that comes of fruition to it. So just give yourself a little bit of a timeout on July 11th and on July 13th at 5.48 p.m. For 16 hours and four minutes, we are going to have a void mood, of course. So this is across our evening hours. Sometimes this is when we go on a first date, when we're surfing around looking for a new job, a new connection. We're trying to explore different ways out or end of the situations that we want to be around in our lives. But this is not a good time to launch. This is a great time to be creative, to drift, and to dream, to just appreciate where we are. Now, if you've already begun things, creative projects, say you've been writing a book or a novel as an example, and you're continuing the chapter, it's okay to do it that evening. But we don't want to launch a brand new outline of anything during this period of time. You're welcome to do so, but it's not going to have any fruition overall. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the opening and closing aspects that we're working with this week. Now, the first aspect tells us what the tone of the story is going to be as the moon tra travels through this part of the sky. The closing aspect tells us how that story is going to end. And those are important points if you're trying to understand, okay, do I need to have this event at this time? Now, under this Leo moon, the first aspect is opposing Pluto, and the last aspect is square to Uranus. So what that tells us is as we step into this work week, it could be a little bit dicey. That opposition to Pluto is going to make us aware of a power play. The power we have, the power someone has, it's likely to be an old story in play in general. And you're trying to work out what do I need to do now on an emotional level so that I feel that I can be creative and original and still ensure that I have my power or that I'm not overpowering others around me? It's a pretty deep, profound question. And I'm sure you are probably thinking right now of something that that may apply to in your life. Now, as we work throughout that moon, we do have a lot of you know suggestions and ideas about what do we need to do about this? And you may find that there's so many ideas that you're not really sure which direction to take, especially on Sunday going into Monday. But because of how you're feeling about this power struggle and this creative, passionate energy, there could be some intense moments on Monday, especially Monday afternoon. You feel like you have to take action and it's edgy. But I think once you cross that line, a couple hours later, you're going to feel like you can work with whatever has stirred up towards healing. Now, once that settles down, we do end this again with a moon square Uranus. And sometimes moon square Uranuses are any planet having a conversation with Uranus. It's a breakdown to breakthrough. It's something that we did not anticipate, but now it's here. We have no choice but to deal with it and to face it. And I find that though they can seem a little bit alarming or scary, Uranus transits are always there to serve us. They're always there to show us what our potential is. So kind of keep that in mind as this last aspect comes into play. And that last aspect happens right before that very long voided mood, of course, that's likely going to be happening while you are sleeping. So it's a good energy to fall asleep with questions. How do I do this? Now, when you get up and get going the next day, 8.47 a.m. Central time zone is when the moon moves into Virgo. And it's when we get that work-oriented energy. This is my to-do list. I have to process. I have to get from this point to that point, And this is how I'm going to do it. Now, the first aspect that the Virgo moon is going to have is a square to Jupiter. And the last aspect is going to be opposing Neptune. 
Now, I will say that even though the moon moves into Virgo in the morning on the 9th, it will not have another conversation with a planet until we get into early the next morning on the 10th at 5.07 a.m. Central. So even though we're in a Virgo moon, there we're still in our own space. We're not having to have a lot of emotional conversation with other people. This is a good time to process whatever that Leo moon brought up to look at that to-do list. What do I need to get done and when do I need to have it done by? Now, when we get to that early morning on the 10th, it's, it could feel abundant. Like there's a lot of things coming in at the same time. The moon is squaring Jupiter that's in Gemini. That's a multitude of things. That's a duplicity. So there's more than one things or more than one action steps that you can take. I would kind of watch out for overwhelm at this period of time. I would be mindful of overwhelm and a little bit of anxiety because of the overwhelm at that time. So this would be a good time to check in and say, you know what, are all these ideas fruitful? Do they align with the to-do list that I have? If the answer is yes, then move forward. If not, set them aside. And you could feel like a bit of a power struggle at times throughout this day, but I think if you kind of stick with this is what I need, this is what I desire, and this is what I'm, how I'm going to move forward, you're going to find a nice rhythm and a nice flow throughout the 10th and the 11th. Now, again, the last closing aspect is an opposition to Neptune. So despite all the work and the up and downs that you have gone through, you may not be crystal clear on what needs to happen on the next step as we get to the end of the day on the 11th. That's okay. What you want to do is have the vision of what's to come next and to realize and be very blunt with yourself and say, I do not have a final call on this right now because sometimes that's the best that you can do. We don't know the answer, but we're going to hold the question and hopefully we'll find it as we move forward. Now, the next void moon, of course, that we have, this is that really quick one. It's only 12 minutes long on July 11th at 8.54 p.m. And then the moon is going to move into Libra at 9.06 p.m. Now, the first aspect that the moon is going to have is a sextile with Venus. The last aspect it's going to have is that first quarter moon square, and that will be a square to the sun. Now, I like that the first aspect is a sextile to Venus because Venus rules Libra. So it's sort of like, I've got a lot of ideas. I know who I am. I know where I'm coming from. And I think I know what I'm going to do because a sextile is where ability meets opportunity. It's a suggestion that comes from within or without. It's like you've been walking with this problem all day long, but as soon as you stepped away from it and started to do something else, suddenly the idea or inspiration kind of floods in. That's a sextile. You want to pay attention to those whispers. So as we move through Friday, we're going to have a lot of suggestions and ideas, but you're still going to be in this balancing act. Like you know what needs to be done, but you're not really sure what needs to be done because you can't see everything. You have a contingency plan for this, but maybe not that. And so you're trying to harmonize back and forth between these two vantage points. But because we were at this first quarter moon, I encourage you to think back to last week when you had the new moon. There was an intention. There was something that surfaced that says, you know what, this needs to end so this can begin. This quarter moon is a test. It's saying, you know what, are you going to go forward with those intentions that you set at the new moon? Are you going to put them on the table for another month, year, and just deal with how this is playing out in general? I encourage you to go forward with your new moon intentions, that quarter moon, that edge, that square to the sun. That's exactly what the invitation is. Let's take action on this so we don't have to put up with it anymore so we can move forward and grow through this situation and feel in harmony within and because we're in harmony within we are in harmony without All right so the next thing that we're going to do is just put up the chart and take a look at where these moons are going to be impacting each rising sign this is not a detailed horoscope i do have a horoscope video that comes out every week that you'll be able to kind of look at how all the planets are interacting but it's important to know where the moon is transiting because that lets you know where your emotion and your intuition may have its focus despite where the other planets may be having conversations in the sky. All right, so first off, Cancer, the moon is going to be highlighting three areas of your life that have to do with your values, what's important to you and why, your communication, that local environment. You may find that you get a lot of things done, a lot of communication, things off your to-do list this week, and also your foundations, your home and your roots. How do you need to rebalance this area of your life so you feel more structured and in harmony in every corner of your life? All right, so if you were a Leo or a Leo rising, the moon is going to highlight not only your individuality, but also your resources, what's important to you and why, and that local environment, your mindset, how you think and how you communicate. This is a great way to really get organized around your resources, what's important to you and why. And it's a good time to activate those intentions that you set last week to ensure that your local environment is set up for success, how you communicate, how you connect with others. So if you are a Virgo or a Virgo rising, the moon is going to highlight a very subconscious area of your life, but also a very self-expression. This is who I am and what, and then what your values are and how you can gain more resources. 
So as we start off the week, you may have some internal power plays that you're working with. But once we get the week started right there in the middle underneath that Virgo moon, you're going to shine that Virgo energy that's all about, okay, this is the list. I need to get it done. This is the order, the practical pathway that I can take. You're going to feel really activated with that. And as we finish out the week, you're going to feel motivated to think about your resources and what action steps you want to take at this point to move forward. All right. If you are a Libra or a Libra rising this week, the moon is going to highlight your social circles, something on a subconscious level and your self-expression, your individuality. This is how I express myself to the world. This is a good time to think about endings and beginnings this week because when that Virgo moon, that working moon is activated, it's going to be behind the scenes looking at your legacy, your foundations and your roots and your subconscious and getting organized and clear there is going to help you step out into the world and shine in, in a profound way and find harmony in every corner. All right. If you are a Scorpio or Scorpio rising, the moon is going to highlight your career, your reputation, how you're known in the world, those social circles. And also towards the end of the week, you may be thinking about how you can harmonize both endings and beginnings. But I do think this is a great working week when it comes to networking and socializing. This is the to-do list I have. This is the organization that I need to put together around how I connect with my clients, my day in and day out, and the network of people that I am connected to. Now, if you are a Sagittarius or a Sagittarius rising, you're going to notice that the moon highlights an area of your life that has to do with your convictions, exploring new directions, teaching, learning but also your reputation and the network that you're connected to. This is a great time to get organized around your authority, your self-expression, how people know you in the world, getting to-do lists out of the way, presenting something that says, this is a new organized way that I want to be known and express myself and reharmonizing or rebalancing with a network that you're associated with. Though it could be edgy at times, I think you're going to find a, a new harmony that comes into that area of your life. So networking, this is who I am, my reputation, and whatever convictions you want to lean on this week is something that's going to be highlighted. Now, if you are a Capricorn or a Capricorn rising this week, you may notice that your emotional attention is focused on your legacy, endings and beginnings. Where do you want to go from here? And how does that support your reputation, how you're known in the world? This is a great week to lean on mentors, to think about things that you have learned, things that you want to share with other people, getting organized with any kind of travel plans or communication that you are getting ready to take out into the world. And by the end of the week, it could feel a little bit edgy when it comes to your reputation, but that edge is asking you to harmonize, to rebalance, to ensure that you are following through with those new moon intentions that you set last week. Now, if you are a Aquarian or an Aquarian rising this week, the emotional attention that you have is going to be focused on your one-to-one -one partnerships. This doesn't necessarily mean romantic. It's more of a social energy that you're thinking about. You're also thinking about some intimate ones, though, midweek when the moon moves into Virgo, legacies, things that have to do with shared resources, contracts. I'm in it for the long term. What transformation do we need to go through? And where is that going to take us? At the end of the week, you may not be very clear on that new direction that you're trying to go in, what you want to learn or teach or explore, but you're going to be invited to lean back into those new moon intentions that you had this week. Now, if you are a Pisces or a Pisces rising, your emotional attention this week is going to be focused on the habits that you have, how it plays into your overall health and wealth. Also, your partnerships, the very social connections that you have both one-on-one, -on -one, but also in the local day-to-day -day flow. And you're going to be thinking about who you want to have in your corner long-term, those deep, intimate relationships, shared wealth transformations. This is a great way to get clear on any kind of contracts you have, to-do list or organization that you need when it comes to partnerships or organizational skills that you have day in and day out. Now, if you are an Aries or an Aries rising, your emotional attention this week is going to be focused on things that you love without condition, people, places, and things, the habits that you have and the partnerships that you have one-to-one. -one. This is a good week to get organized when it comes to your habits, the work that you must do and how it supports your overall health and wealth. But it's also a time to notice where you have certain power struggles around your passions or where you need to reharmonize some of the contracts or clients or partnerships that you have to ensure that both sides have their needs being met. Now, if you are a Taurus or a Taurus rising, this week your emotional attention is going to be focused on your foundation, something close to your home, your actual home, the passions that you have, things that you love without condition, people, places, and things, and the habits and the work that you do day in and day out. This is a great time to get organized when it comes to that creative energy that you have. Say, okay, this is the ins and outs of the entrepreneurships that I have. These are the contingency plans that I have. These are the passions that I really want to lean into so I feel supported. You could feel a little bit edgy towards the end of the week, like you know that you need to take these action steps, but you're not really sure if you are ready to take them. I encourage you to be the one that takes those actions to harmonize and to balance because that will make you feel like it was your idea, that you're more in control of the situation 
And then you'll be more willing to look at how you can harmonize with other people. All right, if you are a Gemini or a Gemini rising this week, your emotional energy is going to be focused on that local environment, how you communicate and socialize and network and connect with other people, but also your home and things that you love without condition. This is a good week to get organized at a foundational level right there at your home. What is in your way all the time that you can readjust so that you have a better flow in the morning, in the afternoon, no matter what you're doing? How can you get healthy to-do list organization in this area of your life? It could feel a little bit edgy towards the end of the week when it comes to romantic things, passionate things, things that you love without condition. But whatever edge you're feeling there, it's inviting you to go back and think about your new moon intentions, what needs to change and why. So there can be harmony, not only when it comes to your passions, but in that daily flow that you have. All right, that is the forecast for this week. I do hope that you find this predictive tool to be very helpful as you schedule your fade. Now, remember, if you'd like to get these forecasts in advance, if you're looking at a couple of weeks down the road, you can always sign up for my Patreon. Join the community on YouTube. I love these programs because it allows me to connect with you on a more personal level. There's also a lot of other great bonuses in there for you as well. All right, with that being said, I hope you have a good one. I'll see you next time.